So in this video, I'm going to redo a previous example I had done that used the parallelogram law, and I'm going to use Cartesian vector notation. Uh, so uh, Cartesian vector notation, it makes it a lot easier dealing with multiple vectors, uh, while the parallelogram law is very difficult to deal with more than just two vectors. Uh, it, it's just a very long uh, process, trigon trigonometric functions, while Cartesian vector notation handles uh, multiple vectors, m more than two vectors, even two vectors, very easy, uh, very easily. So the first thing we want to do is we want to break up each of our vectors, f1 and f2, into their uh, x and y components. So if we look at f1 right here, f1 is going to have some component in the x direction, some component in the y direction. Uh, here's its x component, and here's its y component. So what do we see right away? We see both of these components are going against the x and y positive directions. So they're both going to have to be negative. So f1 is going to have a minus uh, 30 from right here, the magnitude, times in this case, I'm going to just use this 30 degrees uh, angle that was given to me. So it's going to be 30 times the sine uh, to get this distance right, uh, this length right here. I need to use the sine of 30. And then again, uh, this y direction is pointing against this uh, positive y direction. Uh, so I need a negative sign. Uh, so minus 30 times the cosine of 30 uh, with a j, uh, j unit vector. So i unit vectors are typically used to denote the x direction. j unit vectors are typically used to denote <coughs> excuse me, the y uh, direction. And k is used to denote the z direction. So after we get the f1, we want to break up our f2. So f2 is sort of the same. Uh, we want the, the x direction, and then we want the y direction. So our f, uh, f2 is going to be equal to uh, 26. So a minus 26, right? Uh, because it points against this positive x direction, minus 26. Um, you could convert this to degrees and know what this uh, degree is and then use the sine and cosine. But I'm just gonna multiply the 26 by five over 13. So this, we're doing the x direction. So I want this five over 13. And then this is this has a i component and then i want to add because we are now going with the positive y axis so plus 26 times this 12 over 13 and this is a j component to it now the next thing we want to do is we want to bring our i components together and our J components together. So our force uh, in the X direction, our resultant force in the X direction is equal to uh, minus 30 times a sine of 30 minus 26 times 5 over 13. And then this is, has a I component. And our force in the Y direction is going to be equal to minus 30 times the cosine of 30 plus 26 times 12 over 13 in the j direction. Uh, we can simplify these because we can, these have like uh, unit vectors. So this is going to be equal right here to minus 10, minus 15, uh, i, so this is equal to minus 25i. And then this is going to be equal to um, minus 25.9 plus uh, 24. I'm rounding here, but 24. And that's going to be equal to minus 1.9 in the j direction. So what does this actually tell us? If we take a look at 
Um, if we take a look at another graph, this is telling us that if we start at zero, zero, we have to go minus 25 in this I direction and we have to go down 1.9 in this J direction. So here's 1.9 in the downward direction. Here's 25 in this, uh, in this negative X direction. And that tells us where our resultant is. So our resultant is right like this. We can figure out the magnitude of the resultant. So our re resultant magnitude, FR, is going to be equal to the square root of f r x squared plus f r y squared and then this is going to be equal to the square root of minus 25 squared plus minus 1.9 squared and if uh, because we're squaring a negative uh, it's going to be a positive which we need because we're using a square root uh, and we get that this is equal to um, the 25.1 uh, uh, kilonewtons. Yeah. Um, these aren't kilonewtons. Uh, so that's telling us that this length right here is uh, 25.1 uh, kilonewtons. And to figure out the direction, uh, we, there's an easier way to do directions. We can just use trigonometry. Uh, so we want to find this angle and then we want to add this angle to it. This angle is 90 degrees. And then this angle is just going to be, um, let's call it theta. So theta is equal to the tangent, uh, the inverse tangent of 1.9 over 25. And this is going to be equal to 4.3 degrees. Now, because I uh, the 4.3 degrees is this part right here, so it's 4.3 degrees under this x-axis. Because I'm asking the angle of the resultant from the positive y-axis, we have to add uh, this this part of the angle into it. So we have 90 plus 4.3. And we get this is equal to 94 uh, point th 94 point three degrees. So our final answer, again, just like our parallelogram law, uh, becomes uh, th has uh, a magnitude of 25.1 uh, kilonewtons at um, 94.3 degrees measured uh, from the horizontal uh, from the positive uh, vertical axis.